another week with Sport of Five. So um, my name's Jamie again, um, and as always, we co-host Adam. Adam, you're all right? Hi, mate. How are we doing? You all right? Things another going fr- all right? Another fresh trim? <laughs> yeah, I had to. Another lockdown look, as they say. <laughs> yeah, man, it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously each week um, we get some very special guests on. Um, but obviously this week we've got a current Wigan player so Joe Williams is uh, joined us today so thank you Joe Joe you alright? How are you getting on? Good mate yeah thanks how are you? Good great, uh, great to have you on obviously really appreciate your time uh, so we've got quite a lot of questions from me and Adam we've got an apprentice of ours coming on and then we'll have some viewers questions yeah. uh, towards the end so thanks very much so Adam do you want to no yeah, so um, today uh, we're, we're, we've got an apprentice, Liam Sweeney, um, who's coming on to ask Joe a couple of questions. But beforehand, we are at the moment, we are recruiting for our education programmes. And today we're just asking Liam to come on uh, here to talk a little about his journey at Wigan Athletic Community Trust. Uh, he was on the Level 2 Football and Education programme um, and now he's moved on to Level 3 um, Apprenticeship. So it's great to have you. So Liam, um, how are you today, mate? You OK? I'm good, thanks, Adam. Not so bad. Good. Uh, do you want to just talk to us about a little bit about your journey at Wigan Athletic? Well, I started, I turned up originally to sign on for a different course on it, which is a traineeship, but then I was uh, guided on to the level two, which was life-changing, to be honest. It helped me a lot in life and it gave me a lot of different pathways that I could choose from and best one of the best things that ever happened to me. Fantastic. I know you've got a couple of questions for, for Joe. Um, so do you want to fire away with your question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first question I've got for you, Joe. Is, it, is being a professional footballer everything it, you expected it to be? Um, it's a tough question, to be fair. Um, yeah, in a way. Because it's all you wanted to ever do. You just pictured yourself going into training and going into work every day and just enjoying football and you know, it's a, it's a dream job where no matter what anyone says, if people moan about it or anything like that, you'll have your own moan and stuff. But it's a dream job just to go in and whatever level it is, just to play football every day for a living. It's it's brilliant. It's what everything I wanted to do. Uh, second question. If you weren't a professional footballer, what career or job do you think you might have gone into? <laughs> <sighs> Don't know, you know. I weren't, I weren't the greatest in school. What it was in school, I just, I was I was a good kid in school. I wasn't up to no good in that. It was just, I was just not interested in that side because I just, I was so desperate to, to make it in football. So I was just constantly in class, just thinking about football and in games and stuff like that. So um, what would I do? Pff, don't know. Work with my dad or something, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Right, cheers, cheers, Liam. Cheers for them questions. So, um, we'll move on, Adam, uh, Joe. So, first of all, um, obviously, we've all been locked down and things like that. So, what have you been getting up to, Joe, in lockdown and how, how have you been finding it? Um, you know, it's tough like everyone, to be fair, but you, know, um, you can't get yourself too down. We've had programmes and stuff off the club, um, a few runs and things like that. So I've sort of still been in a in a routine, which is good. Not like my routine hasn't been messed up and things like that. I've just had been cracking on with my work and you know making making what you can out of it, really. Yeah. So uh, we we spoke about just before you come on about going back into the training, and obviously there's pro- there's probably a lot of people watching who are very interested for how the phase return training is going to come about because it, it's it's new to everyone. So. Um, how are you adapting to the new changes and the, the new rules and the new laws? Yeah, you know, it's not ideal. Um, obviously, everyone wants to just get back to normal as quick as possible, but obviously there's got to be certain steps that you've got to take before that happens. And it's went well so far. You know, Monday, everyone's feeling good, everyone's healthy. So, um, such wood stays like that. And, um, yeah, it's been good. We've been split up into groups of four or five of us. And we've just uh, cracked on with our running and had a bit of ball work as well. So it's uh, it's been really, really enjoyable. Nice to get back in, see some of the lads. But obviously, you need to take these these steps before we can go into full con- to, uh, contact training and stuff like that. So um, 
you want to sort of go back to, to sort of the start of your career and um, what it was like as a child. I seen a good um, a good photo on Instagram that Calvert Lewin put up of you two playing against each other at a young age. So I know you you told me you grew up in in Heighton as a young lad. So where what age did you start playing and what age did you get picked up from your first club? Um, I was about six when I started playing and about seven or eight when I went to Everton. So I was a really young age. I played a Sunday league team called the Mags. So I used to play from used to play there on a Saturday and then go and play at Everton on a Sunday. So um yeah, really young age I got picked up and then obviously I had to sign contract with Everton when I was nine years of age and then just went through right through the academy really. And how, how did you find that being signed up at such a young age? And I lo- yeah, I loved it. Loved every minute of it. You know, um, I look back now; it is very young, and um, you have to make a lot of a lot of choices and sacrifices and things like that. But um, yeah, I wouldn't. I have no regrets. I wouldn't wouldn't change any of that. Um, that was just my path, really. Brilliant, cheers, Joe. So. Uh, Joe, you've got you, who kind of influenced you to to start playing football? I mean, we got you. There's yeah. lots of different stories, like with, with different footballers and different athletes who you know they've got f- famous people who they kind of watch. Who kind of influenced you to to start playing football? No one in particular. It was just God. Just go down the park with my dad. Really, just go down the park with my dad and just have a kick about and just um, just enjoy it. Really, he'd never let me win one game. Like. He was um, he, that's how I think I'm so competitive now because he would never let me win. So I was that desperate to win a game against him in the park. But yeah, just my dad really taking me to the park all the time and stuff. There was no one in particular at that age who I watched because um, I was so young. So I think just going down the park and uh, just enjoying it, and then later on starting to enjoy it with my mates. When you was going, when you were talking about, you touched on you signed your contract uh, at nine years old. How? How did that make you feel? And did you look up to anyone in the Everton squad at the time because you'd signed your contract with Everton? Yeah. Was that a kind of influence on you? Yeah, and it was. Um, I remember going in, you'd, you'd sign it, you get a picture with David Moyes and stuff like that. So I still remember it all now. Um, yeah, it was a great moments, but it's like at that age, you're not really thinking, I'm going to play in the first team. You're just thinking, oh, I'm in Everton's academy and you're made up. It's until you get to like 12 and 14 when you start realising and you're thinking, right, I wanna I wanna make it now, I wanna make it as a football. But at that age, it's just all about just enjoying football. I'd say players there, there was Kale and players like that. I think Rooney had just left. So there was a lot of players there that ever knew you who you'd look up to. Oh great. Um in terms of now, um, do you have any kind of pre-game traditions or superstitions, or is there anyone at the club? Uh, at Wigan now, who has a kind of a a, a a weird one, superstition, whether they put the left boot on first or whatever? Trying to think. I know I've had the same shin pads since I was 12 and I'll never changed them. That's one one thing that I've got. Um, but all stuff like that, I've never really um, I've never really been into it. I just have the same, same shin pads. That's it, really. I don't... I'm trying to think now. I don't think... Don't think many have. I, think, I don't think many have a few. I think they keep them quiet, really, and do them themselves. But I know I've had the same shinies for what is it now? Nearly ten years now. So, yeah. Bit of wear and tear on them, then. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone loses me shinies, they'll be murder. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to the next question, Kat. What What's the best game you've ever been involved in? Um. The Leeds game was was good, West Brom, this year. Um, I played pre-season at Everton, and that was in front of about 60, 70,000 in Kenya. That was that was a good game, but obviously it was a friendly, it wasn't really important. So I'd probably say I'd probably say Leeds or West Brom game, especially how important the results were in them games as well. What was it in them games? What kind of make it? What, what 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 was it about the games? What made it like so good for you to be involved in? Just the atmosphere, really, and and you get into that 
that point of the season where you are, you've got to roll your sleeves up and you've got a the position you're in, you've got to you've got to like pull you've got to yeah, you've got to pull your sleeves up and you've got to make an impact on the game and stuff like that. And you know, I think I think we've done that and that's what was enjoyable. And obviously away games as well. It's nice to um, shut the away crowd up a little bit in it. So yeah. <laughs> So I know there's a couple of a couple of people like before they you know you know they have before a game they have some pasta or some rice or you know with some chicken or something like what do you eat before a game? Anything in particular or do you get like a set meal plan? No, the lads lay into me because I have like two, three meals before a game. <laughs> I'll have I wake up, I'll have porridge, banana, then I'll have an omelette, um, chicken, pasta, the full lot. I just I think I have fit about two or three meals in there. If that's a half twelve kickoff, is that a do you struggle with that? Yeah, or? no, I've just I've got to got to just cram it all in. <laughs> Does it not make you feel sick halfway through a game? Nah, I'm all right. You know, I think I think when I don't eat that much, I get hungry at half time, and then I'm eating at half time like bananas and stuff yeah. like that constantly. <laughs> so it's all right. So after a game, you finish ninety minutes. What's your go-to meal? What do you go to? I'd, get, I'd go home and get a Domino's, you know. <laughs> fitness coaches won't be happy, but i just go home and get a Domino's. <laughs> I've always done that since I was a kid. <laughs> Can't beat a good Domino's, though, can you? No, got to be done. <laughs> just fill yourself back up. <laughs> we'll, just have to hope, we'll just have to hope they're not watching so you don't incriminate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, um, you've t- obviously, a, a large part of your career was was at Everton and obviously a massive part of your development to, to get where you've got to now so how was it coming out of you know like the under 23s and Everton to come and play in the championship I know you had two two loan spells which we'll touch on but how, how was it making that step and did you feel like you'd done it at the right time or should you have done it earlier yeah yeah well I think when I was about 18 I, I was um I was sort of on the fringes of the first team and stuff like that. And I knew I'd go on loan the next year, but I obviously snapped my knee and I couldn't I couldn't do that. So I was I was held back a year a bit. But you know, it was quite frustrating at the time because when you're a, when you're a kid, you have that much belief in yourself and confidence in yourself that you feel you should be playing in the first team. But on my first loan, when I went to Barnsley and I played my first game. I, I knew that weren't the case and I needed a full season of the championship because that first game was tough and you're playing against men. I think I was only 19, 20 and it was it was really tough. But as soon as that first game went, I sort of adapted to it quite quickly. And since then I've been I've been absolutely fine with it. Like it's been good. Yeah, so touching on on the two the two loan spells, you, you made a significant amount of appearances for both clubs. Um, would you say this has helped develop your career like you said do you think without the loans uh, your career path might have been a little bit different or yeah as as I say I'd say the year I went to Bolton I'd, I've always said I always said I think I was ready to play in Everton's first team then and I said it at the time to the manager at the time um, I thought I was ready because I feel like you've got to have that, you've got to have that belief in yourself because if you don't there's no point in playing football, but that was just my thought on at the time. Um, I went there; it was close to home, um, so it was it was comfortable for me. Really, obviously, there was a lot of difficulties in that club. Um, yeah, from start to finish, it was a it was a really tough year for the club. But I had to sort of look at it selfishly in a way and just think, right, you've got to learn. You've got to learn every Saturday whether you're getting beat or what. You just you've got to learn. You've got to pick things up and improve yourself as a player. So how, how did you find, obviously you had your two loans and you're saying about, about learning each week, whether for the, for the team or for yourself, but obviously moving now, you've moved to Wigan on a permanent. What, what was involved in that decision? And, and do you look at your career a little yeah. bit differently now than, than you did when you were on the loans? Yeah, obviously when you sign for someone, it's completely different because you've got sort of like, a bond with the with the club, do you know what I mean, with the fans and stuff like that. Um, so as soon as you sign for someone, it's a it's you can you can have a look at loans and you can think a bit more about yourself. 
in a way. And it sounds selfish, but that's just that's just what it's like because you're not their player. But as soon as you're someone's player, I feel like other other things come into it and the club comes into it and you've got to put other things first. You can't just be putting your, yourself first all the time. So that's what I've that's what I've learned this year. And um yeah, I was I was buzzing to sign that. Obviously Joe Royal had a few phone calls with me. I know Joe from when I was at Everton and spoke to Reedy and stuff like that. And then as soon as I met the gaffer, it was just no brainer. It was 40 minutes down the road and it was another opportunity for me to play play in the championship and learn even more. Well, some some good answers there, Joe, from, uh, from making the permanent move. My my question to you is kind of what what's the best piece of advice you you've ever been given as a, as a player or in your personal life? What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I I had one when I was under tens, an academy coach. He said, never listen to anyone who's always telling you good things. He said, always listen to the criticism and stuff like that. He said, never, never take in all the good things. Always take in the, um, all the criticism and the feedback. That was one that I remember early. Is that something you took on board going forward into like your pro career and things like that? You know, are you hard on yourself? Yeah, it's really hard on myself. Yeah, I'd say I probably. I'm probably harder on myself than anyone else is on me. So, but I think that I think that's a good thing as well. It can be a good and a bad thing, really. Yeah. Uh, what What's it like being called up to international duty? What 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 has that kind of has that impacted the way you play or anything like that? Yeah. Um. Totally. Totally different football. Totally different. Um. Obviously, when I went, we had all, you just have all the ball and. It's not as fast as other leagues, but to be called up, brilliant. I remember when I got called up first time and all my family come up. It was up in Doncaster, it was. We were playing Canada. All my family come up and came to watch. We had unbelievable teams, some unbelievable players in it. So it was a great feeling, like really good feeling. What was the type of players you had in there? Who was you playing with at the time? Yeah, so we had. I was at Everton with Mason Holgate at the time. It was Rashford was in there, Harry Winks, Casey Palmer, um, Alarena, Angus Gunn. So it was a re- really strong team, to be fair. Really good team. Another question to you here. This might be a bit controversial, this one. I mean, we spoke about, a little bit about it before. Um, a lot of people have asked this. Are you claiming the goal against, against Leeds? I've got you, haven't I? I've got it. Every shot of it this year, the keeper saved or has been blocked. So I've got to, and I can't celebrate like that for an own goal, can I? <laughs> I can't be embarrassing myself celebrating like that for an own goal. With the with the game being at that at that time, maybe a pivotal pivotal point in the year, like how big of a win was that? Oh, it was massive. Yeah, it was really big. And to be fair. I remember we played, I think it was Sheffield Wednesday on the Tuesday and we scored in the last minute and we were constantly conceding last minute goals and it was just zapping the energy and the life out of us. And for us to get a late winner, it was like, right, come on, then let's let's go now. And then since that game, we just, the belief that you're seeing out of some of the lads, it just went totally different level. And we, we actually believed we could win that day. And then we I don't think we've looked back since... We believe we can win every single game. Must have been so. Even whether that whether you knew it was your goal or, or whatever, it must have been a great yeah. feeling to run over to them, travelling away fans and such a such a massive ground like Ellen Road and so, like oh, a team yeah. that's been in the Prem for so long. So how was yeah. that for you? No, it was brilliant. To be fair, I remember the game. We we the, it was the keeper Kassia and he flap he flaps at every and he wants to come for every cross. And I tried to catch him out like a few times in the near post and stuff like that, and it didn't work. And then that corner didn't even work, but we knew if we'd have the bodies around him, so we have, I remember we had Nasey and the Evans around him, that he'd come out and he, he wasn't stronger coming and collecting the ball. So um, it, was something, it was something we actually worked on set, set play-wise, so it was credit to the staff. But yeah, running over to the fans and stuff like that, brilliant feeling, I hope more of them and it goes down as mine next time. 
<laughs> even even just that's a great insight. Like a lot of pe- a lot of people would see that goal and, and you wouldn't realise that you probably did work on it through the week. So yeah, no, that's yeah. a great insight. So uh, the, this next part now we're, we're going a bit um, a bit soccer. I am so I'll yeah. be I'll be like tubes. Um, so we're gonna just quick fire questions out here and they're, they're all about like teammates in the dressing yeah. room. Now. So uh, you can put you can use yourself if you want. It's up to you. All right. Yeah. So, who's the biggest joker in the Wigan dressing room? It's going to be Gary Roberts, I think. Go Joe Garner. Rob O's just dead loud if he goes in the canteen. You know, he's there. He's shouting all, all kinds of things. He's messing around with all the lads' stuff. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, you can't trust him. And then you've got, you've got Garns... He's funny in a different way. He doesn't he doesn't really know he's being funny, but he has me in he has me in stitches all the time. And he's yeah, he, uh, he's made me laugh a few times, but he doesn't really know he doesn't really know he's doing it. But yeah, both both really good lads. So uh, get out them well. All right. So who's the most who's the most vain player? Who's always in the mirror? Vain. Pff, that's easy. P- Tom Pierce. <laughs> wow. I go for food. I go for food with him, and I'll say, "Meet me, meet me at uh, two o'clock." And I'll be sitting out. I, I promise you now, I'm sitting outside for forty minutes. Forty minutes. I've sat there waiting for him once. He's in the mirror, makeup, hair, the lot. <laughs> Will he be happy about that? Saying about makeup and stuff. He won't. He won't. He won't say it's him, but it's a hundred. Any lad will tell you a hundred percent him. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. So. Um... Who, who works the hardest in training? Who, who's the hardest worker? I'd say Morsey. Morsey's an hard worker. Every time we do the running, he hates getting beat. Um, myself, I'd say I'd say I work hard, and I'd say Jedi Andy Robinson. He's a he's hard working in training. Yeah. Right, so on the flip side. Few- of that- there's a few toss it off. Just come alive on a Saturday, a few of them. That's what I was gonna say. Keith who's Ed. your who's your worst? Who's your worst trainer? Kiefer by a mile. <laughs> by a mile. It's a good job he performs on a Saturday. <laughs> to be fair, he just um he's he's quite relaxed in training through the week. He prepares his but he's really good. He prepares himself really well on and off the pitch. And he takes it easy in training and stuff like that. But we um, we give him a bit of stick for it sometimes. Uh, but on a Saturday, he performs really well. So we just let him we let him do what he wants, really. <laughs> How do you prepare off the pitch, Joe? Yeah, How quite well, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I eat, especially in the... Obviously, when you're in, in the summer and you're off and that, you let yourself go a bit. But... Um, all week leading up to games, eat the right stuff, water every day. Um, that's the main thing, really. I do. I just, I just make sure I'm drinking water all the time, and um, always hydrated. And um, yeah, just, just uh, it's quite regular thing now. Just like a normal week. Yeah. Which is that that often. So moving on, who's the who's the hard man in the dressing room? I'd have to go. If I was in, if I was getting in, if I was in a fight, I'd want Morsey behind me. I think. <laughs> I think, especially now he's shaved his head because he looks a bit more scarier. <laughs> See him, so, I'd say yeah, but I, I, I look at Joe Garner and people like that. I think they can probably have a go as well. So, yeah. So. <laughs> who's uh, who's got the worst dress sense in the dressing room? I've seen a few, you know. <laughs> I've seen a few. Give us some examples, Joe. Do John Steele and come in in I, I, the only thing I can describe them as is you know, do you remember girls used to wear oak boots, is it? Yeah. The only thing that's the only thing I can describe them as. They were absolutely <laughs> horrific. I've never seen anything worse than them. Yeah. I'd say I'd have to go with Dujon, I think. Um, Lee Evans so is, 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 is he thinking in the style but not quite made it 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Lee Evans loves to say night tracky. Grey or black night tracky every day. Stand up. <laughs> so there's a couple of things about, you know, going around in football. Um, what was your initiation like at Wigan Athletic? Did you have one? Yeah, I had to um, most nerve-wracking thing in the world. I hate them. Um, you have to get up on the seat while everyone's having a lunch and um, sing into a tomato sauce bottle or whatever. And I think I said what this. I think I sang Wonderwall Oasis. So it was quite a basic one. I just got it done and got off. No problems. But what's the uh, What's the worst one you've seen? I remember me and me and Jedi when we were at Everton and it was. We were 17, 18, so it was our first pre-season with them. It was Martinez at the time. So we went to Singapore. We went up on this sort of, this big restaurant on top of a building. There was loads of people in there. And I've just heard the sound, a um, little knife against the glass. And I thought, that's it, we're, um, we're singing here. So um, what's going on? We can't sing in front of all these people. He's made us get up in the middle of the restaurant in front of everyone in the whole restaurant and made us all sing first scene, throwing stuff at us a lot. So that was the worst one I think I've ever done. But Jedi smashed it, to be fair. He loved Jedi's. Right, so... Um, oh, that's quite funny, that, to be fair. Um, so, obviously, you know, we're a, we're, we're a charitable... Um, we're a charity, sorry, uh, connected with the club. Uh, you've been involved in uh, a few of our projects in the past. Um, I know you've done a few, few other things with us. So, uh, how did you find them, and uh, what do you think of being involved with the community work? And do you think it's important? Yeah, massively, massively. You know, I, I went to uh, I think the last one I done was a school with the kids, and you know, just uh, just to help them and stuff like that, and what the work you do for them and the effort you put in. Um, I thought it was different class, yeah. I thought it was superb. And, you know, obviously to go and put a smile on people's faces and things like that. And you get all the lads as well who, who are all good with it and who all come down any time and, and um, do stuff for you. But all the effort and work that you all put in, I think, is, is really good. Okay, so moving on. Um... We did we did one of these interviews with Emerson Boyce a few weeks back, um, and we asked him his ultimate five-side team with players that he's played with and then players that he's played against. So I'm going to ask you uh, your ultimate five-side team for players that you've you've shared a pitch with. So the sorry that you played with, so yeah. either like Everton, Barnsley, Bolton, or or your current team. Um, so yeah, who would you start with? Who'd be your keeper? I'd have to go Jamie Jones because on five sides he is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I'd have to go Jamie Jones for that. And obviously we go car school together, so he'd kill me if he didn't pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think Emerson put, I think he put one defender in and then he had like a two and then. Yeah, the so I'd go defence. I'd go Leighton Baines, probably. Um Midfield, I'd go Harry Winks and Joe's unbelievable five side, Kieran Dahl. I put Kieran Dahl in as well. Wow. And then up top, I'd, you have to go Rashford because he was unbelievable. Yeah. I don't I don't think many have beat that team to be fair. No, Jones would have a lot of clean sheets there. <laughs> uh, who would be who would be your super sub? Who would you bring on? From one of them knackered. It's a tough one, though. Bring yourself on, Joe. <laughs> no, I just kick people. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Bray Pilks, Pilks. He's come on and spanged a few goals for us before, so. Um, I love it when I love I love playing with Pilks. He's good to play with and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I would probably put Pilks on both footed. Yeah, bang a few goals in. So now we're gonna go um, completely the opposite. Who you five-a-side team who you've played against? Who? What do you mean? 
So who you've who you've ever shared a pitch with who's not on your team? Who who would you so Yeah, I get you, I get you. Um that's a tough one. Yeah, so we I Emerson struggled with this one for a while to be fair. I'd go I'll just go championship because that's where I've played the most. So I'd go right. and go the lad for West Brom, is it Johnson? I'd and say him. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'm say him and go. John Terry, I'd say. Then I'd, I'd have to go. I'd go Grealish Madison. And then Striker. Striker, I don't know. The lad for Brentford, is it, was it Mopai? Yeah, these are uh, yeah. going up, up right now, Neil Mopai. Yeah, yeah, I'd go him. I'd go Mopai. So I'd that be me one from the championship, I'd say, yeah. It wasn't that hard, to be fair. It's quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> you can have one super sub if you want. Up to you. Ben Rahm and Adaf coming on. Yeah, just not wow. making people. <laughs> So uh, moving on, uh, we've got a couple of viewers' questions. And who is the most famous person you've ever met in the sporting context or just in general? Most famous person I've ever met. That's a tough one. You know, I think we'll I'd come back to it. I'd have to say Rooney. Yeah, when uh, Rooney signed for us, he come in. Season, um, yeah, I looked up to him loads. So I was starstruck when I seen Mooney for the first time, I think, and then having to train with him unbelievable. We've got, um, obviously, we're getting a lot of comments in, um, and you mentioned Tom Pierce being quite vain. He's not before, watching, is he? He's, um, he's meant he's, he's put he's put your beard game is weak, so I think he's giving you some stick about your beard. <laughs> <laughs> I just got this has took me 23 years to go this. <laughs> you know, do you know what? I'll embarrass him now. He's he struggled to grow a beard, so he's wearing both beard growth. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to fire one back at him. All right, we've got a question from Josh. Um, so this is obviously what the Latics fans said. How does an atmosphere affect your performance when you're playing? And we could also ask you, will it will it affect you going forward when the season starts again with, with no crowds? Yeah. Yeah, for for me, I just whether I was playing in the street or on a field, I just want to win. So or training or whatever. So it doesn't really affect me, but I do know people who I have played with and things like that who it does affect and they do need a sort of a good atmosphere to get themselves going. So it does it does play a massive part on a lot of players, especially without fans. But for me personally, it, it doesn't make a, a difference really. And I know a few a few of the lads at Wigan are the same. They just the way we train and things like that, everyone just wants to win. So I'm sure as soon as you kick off and it's a competitive game, most players will be fine with it. Uh, I've got a question from, from Dave. What's your prediction tonight? Munich versus Dortmund. I'm going Dortmund, you know. Yeah, I've watched them the last few games. They weren't great the last time, but I'd go. I'd go two one Dortmund. I think Sancho with one and Hart is it Haaland? Yeah, yeah he's scoring yeah. for fun at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, flying. So we've got a question from Sam saying, um, "Do you get nervous before any games?" But do you think that would? Do you think that your nerves would change with no crowd or with a crowd? Is it, do you think that's where the nerves come from? <laughs> Um, I don't know because obviously games would be on the telly and stuff like that I think if you get nervous before games get nervous before games personally I think I think it's just it's just what type of person you are whether like whether you feel that way or not personally I don't I don't really get nervous before games the, the only real game I've got nervous for this year and it wasn't even really nervous it was probably Luton because of just the fear of not, um, the fear of getting beat, because we just didn't want to lose against them because they were just behind us and stuff like that. So it's just 
I think mainly for me, it's not nerves, it's just fear of losing. Um, but I, I think actually nerves is a good thing and they can they can help you play play better really and yeah, I I don't whether you get them or not, I don't really see it as it like as a real impact. Got a got a question, just maybe a couple more. Um a, a hat trick or a last minute winner? I'm definitely not getting an hat stuck where I play. So I'll just go <laughs> last minute winner. To be fair, I'd pick last minute winner anyway because the emotion and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, last minute winner I'd pick. You've just mentioned about where you play. So what, what's your most favourable position? Where, where, where do you see yourself as your, as your best position? I just um, I just see myself, you know, people go on about holding mids and attacking mids. And I just see myself as a centre midfielder. Um, obviously, I, I probably prefer receiving the ball deep head in, in the number 10 role. Um, mm. I, yeah, so I'm just... Basically, I just like to play centre mid as a two or whatever, box to box midfield. Um, I like defending and, and attacking. So, yeah, just number eight type player, really. Or, yeah. In terms of your position, though, what from a, a younger person coming through, maybe he's in an academy now or she's in an academy, uh, what piece of advice would you give to a, a centre midfielder now? Well, the main thing I. I always used to do, I used to watch a lot of my games back, and I still do now, and analyse other other players. So as soon as I started getting to 14, I used to watch Xavi all the time, and how many times he'd check his shoulders before the balls was coming to him. He'd check his shoulders two, three, four times. So I used to practice in training all the time, just having pictures in my head, checking my shoulders two, three times before the ball would come to me. And... Um, as long as, as long as that's that's working, and you, you see so many pictures on the pitch, then and what your next pass will be, you can do things a lot quicker. So I would just say, by watching people and just practicing um, little things, especially in that position, I just feel like everything's so quick. You've got to have so many pictures in your head, and uh, you've got to move the ball really fast, really. Must have a sore neck after the game. Oh yeah. Finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just one just one final one from me, Joe. Um you mentioned Javi then. So what couldn't what couldn't play now would you say your game's most your style of play is most similar to? It's a tough one. I've been asked that before. I mean I, I genuinely wouldn't really say anyone, to be fair. You know, I couldn't really I couldn't really think of anyone. I feel like I could play holding mid number eight, number ten. Obviously I feel like I'm much better in holding midfield or centre mid than I am as a number 10 but I can I can do a job there um, when the gaffer needs me to like a sort of defensive number 10 type thing um, but thinking I don't really know who I'd, who I'd really compare compare it to if I was I'd just let other people I'd just let other people decide that I think I'd just try and go and play my own game really and be myself <laughs> Well, one quick fire one for you. Who's got the best car? We've got a question from uh, from Rosemary. Car. Who's got the best car? Best <laughs> car. I'm trying to think about that one. Kiefer's got a nice car. Yeah, nice car. Kiefer, Range Rover. Um, Nathan Bain comes in in his car, all blacked out windows. Yeah. Music blasting. <laughs> yeah, there's not there's not many flashy there's not many flashy ones to be fair. Just all yeah, just all normal cars really. Not many flashy ones. I say Kiefer or or maybe Nate. So uh, we just uh, we just got one more quite a good question to be honest. Um, a, a comment from Oliver saying that you could be our future captain, which is nice. But do do you see yourself as a future captain? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say I'd like to. Um, I'd like. I like to be vocal and I'd like to lead by example. I'd love nothing better than to be a captain of a team. Um, you know, so like it's a big responsibility to have, and and it'd be an honour for me to to be a captain of any team, especially Wigan. So I could see it, yeah. But 
obviously I'm quite young at the, I'm quite young at the minute and I'm just learning. I'm still learning so much. So um I I take little pieces from Sammy, how he how he deals with things in the dressing room and stuff like that, different class and how he leads leads us by example on the pitch, off the pitch, how he lives lives his life and things. So um I take little bits from him. Obviously I've took bits from Jaggy Elka and players like that, how they've done things over Everton. He was captain for many, many years. So it's something I could see in the future, yeah. Yeah. I could see myself doing it. And I'd be quite comfortable with it earlier. Yeah. Brilliant. So um obviously we'll we wanna let you get back to watch him um, Dortmund be buying. Yeah. Uh obviously good luck for the rest of the season for me. Um hope everything hope everything goes well, getting back into training and stuff and uh, so thanks for coming on, Adam. No, no worries, mate. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, Joe. It's been uh, been a pleasure speaking to you, and answering some of the questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. No worries, mate. Right, see you in a bit. See you later.